the thought of revenge is clear in my mind. Jagal is next, and tonight, it ends. November's here, and Excel team dropped their demo for Axe of Blood. I've been following this game on Twitter to see development, and I wasn't expecting a playable build anytime soon, so they must be confident with what they've got cooking up. Initially, a good point of reference would be Southeast Asian Sleeping Dogs minus the open world setting. Freeform combat, weapon pickups and context sensitive item interactions, and enemy attacks with obvious alert prompts for pulling off counters. But once you consider the control scheme, the game feels more like an attempt at a modern beat em up. Punch and kick are separate buttons that you can mix together to make your own combos. You can pick up any weapon that an enemy drops and use it to add some extra oomph to your melee attacks, or throw it at an enemy to deal massive amounts of damage up front. During combat, enemies will have three bars appear over their heads. Health is red and is the biggest of the three. The gray bar above it is the enemy's guard meter, which you also have, but they operate differently from each other. For enemies, a full guard meter means it can block your hits and occasionally respond with their own attack. At first, I was annoyed that enemies can cut your combo short with those counterattacks, but then I realized that I wasn't actually taking health damage, but guard damage. I only took health damage if I didn't respond to a counter prompt fast enough. So it's nice to see the game try to find a way to prolong fights without making either you or the enemy feel like a damage sponge. The yellow bar below an enemy's health is a stun meter of sorts that fills up as they take damage. When it's full, the enemy will go into a stagger state, and you can perform a finisher by holding the punch button. You're invincible during this animation, so you can use it to thin out crowds without fear of retaliation. Instead of a stun meter, you gain a durability meter every time you pick up a weapon. This gives you an idea for how many hits you can dish out before it breaks in case you want to squeeze every last bit of use for that weapon. Attacking enemies fills up a meter at the top center of the screen. When it's full, you can press up at the D-pad to activate rage mode. You're invincible and deal more damage while enraged. If you take any hits during a fight, you can press right on the D-pad to use any medkits you picked up. Guns are a bit unintuitive, as pressing punch while carrying one will only make you use it like a club. You have to hold on left trigger to aim, and then press punch. Don't press right trigger, as that's your sprint and dodge button. There's no use for it in the demo, but you can pick up cash spread throughout the level on shelves and on tabletops and by breaking open safes. You'll most likely be using money to buy skills once that mechanic gets implemented. The demo features a level in the game's campaign and an arena mode that spawns endless amounts of enemies. The level design is linear with a few branching paths you can explore to hunt for collectibles and med kits. There are some objects that are low to the ground that you can kick towards enemies for extra damage by pressing the action button. Sometimes, you let the vault over obstacles by pressing right bumper. It's effectively a second action button for traversal. Before you even get to select the level, you start out in your apartment. You can interact with stuff to glean some insight about your character, but the only other notable thing about your apartment is that it lets you customize your outfit. I'm not sure if you're able to gain more clothes by buying them, but it's nice to be able to personalize your guy. It definitely harkens back to sleeping dogs and no more heroes in that regard. As far as combat goes, it's pretty good. It's got a strong foundation to build on with its combos and what kinds of skills you can unlock. The enemy variety really only amounts to a mix of melee and range types, but I expect to see some more advanced versions of either type in the future. I love the beat em up logic of making stronger enemy types larger than everyone else, and the ability to punch and kick safes open instead of hunting down safe combinations. As of now, I'd say the combat can be a bit simplistic as it's effectively Arkham fighting. You hit one guy a bunch of times, and then you press a counter button to attack someone else before they can hit you out of your combo, then you rinse and repeat. The problem most games have with this kind of gameplay is that they want to make it more complex, and they think that having enemies you can only take out with specific actions will make it interesting. But in my opinion, I think that makes the enemies more annoying, because I have to stop what I'm doing and remember the specific button input to take out the shield guy or the knife guy, and then I have to get back into my rhythm. I hope Axe of Blood doesn't fall into that trap. I think this game's got it right by keeping the inputs relatively simple and upping the enemy count to absurd numbers as you can power through most fights with enough rage and melee weapons to throw around. The boss at the end of the stage can be a bit underwhelming, 
and I think it should be tuned up to be more aggressive, because the rhythm of the fight as it is now is to hit him a bunch and then dodge when he starts swinging. I get what the game's trying to go for with the dodge mechanic, but I think I want the parkour button to serve as a dodge roll to make maneuvering around enemies easier. The only other thing I could see this game getting dinged for is polish when it comes to model collision and animation. I like the ragdolling, but certain parts of the character models tend to clip through each other, especially in the player character. The arena is fun for what it is, but then I got to 75 kills and the game stopped spawning in enemies, so I couldn't get the 100 kill achievement. And I'm also curious as to whether having a crouch button means the possibility of stealth sections in the future, as there didn't seem to be any stealth takedowns when I approach enemies from behind. I thought it was cute on the game's part to set up a cover shooter layout full of ranged enemies, and even cuter to have an homage to the prison fight scene in the raid 2, right next to it. I mentioned finishers before, but I forgot to point out how the animation will change depending on what kind of weapon you're carrying, including guns. It's a nice touch. Anyways, try out the Axe of Blood demo on Steam, and leave a review for the devs there if you like what you see.